Hey, so today I'm going to show you how to create, edit and publish all the important pages on a WordPress editor. Now, if you follow along with me on this video, at the end of it, you'll have a privacy policy page that looks like this, a cookie policy page, a disclaimer page and an about me page that looks like this. All these are done without using any page builder plugins. Now, just in case you're stuck at writing an about me page, I will share with you a formula to help you write an about me page much easier. I will also be sharing with you the templates of those important pages I'll be walking you through in this video. So definitely stick with me to the end and I'll point you to the resources. So this video is going to be long and I recommend that you watch it all the way through. But if you want to skip ahead, you can check out the timestamps in the description. So without further ado, let's get right into creating those pages. Let's go. Okay, so we are on a WordPress dashboard and the first thing we're going to do is to create a cookie policy and we're going to use this template over here, which is by me. If you want this template, you can scroll down to the description below. You will see a link there. So you need to go back to the WordPress dashboard and the first thing you're going to do is to scroll over to pages and you want to click on add new. Okay, and you want to place your title here, which is cookie policy and the next thing is you want to go to the template you want to copy everything and head back to the page and paste it here so remove this and then there's nothing here that you need to change but what you need to keep a lookout for is this perma link over here. This link is a link that you need later on for your privacy policy. You need to place this link in your privacy policy and I'll show you how to do that in a while. So just keep a lookout of this link, okay? Because once you publish, this link will be live. But right now, if you click on this link, you'll point to an error page because it's not published yet. So what you need to do right now is head over to the top right corner. You'll see this publish button here and hit publish. And don't worry about this because you're not optimizing this page for search engine optimization. Basically, you don't need this page to rank, so you don't need to change anything. So we we'll just hit publish and we're done. If you visit this page, you can see that it is published here. So we are done with publishing the cookie policy. It's easy, right? Now, the next thing we're going to do is to create a disclaimer page. So similarly, you need to head back to your WordPress dashboard. And as you can see over here on the all pages, you can see that cookie policy is published and we have a privacy policy which is still on draft. We will edit this page later on. But now we want to create a disclaimer page. So it's either you click on add new here or you can click on add new here. Both will take you to the same place. So now we are on a new page. We want to put this as a disclaimer page. And then we will use this template over here as well. Similarly, this template is available for you. You just need to scroll down to the description. You can find a link there. So what I've done for you is I've highlighted the parts where you need to include your domain name in. So before you make any changes to this page, make sure you make a copy of this first. I'm pretty sure once you click on the link in the description, it will force you to make a copy. But just in case you can't make any amendments to the page, make sure you go over to the top, click on file and make a copy. By doing that, you can edit whatever you want on this page. So over here, let me give you an example. I'm not gonna change every single one of them because this is the template you'll be using. So I don't wanna make so much changes to it. So for my case, my website is jackchowtv.com. So I'll change this and make sure you copy this and change all the parts where it's highlighted. So there are only three items you need to change over here. So I'll copy everything here and head over back to the new page and I'll paste it here. And as you can see, this affiliate disclaimer, you need to change this to a header similar to this and make sure your domain name is included. Okay, and once that is done, just head over to the top right. Similarly, just hit publish and hit publish again. And we are done with the disclaimer. Next, we're gonna edit the privacy policy. So let's head back over to the WordPress dashboard and under pages, all pages, you can see that Disclaimer is published. Now let's edit the privacy policy. And as you can see here, there's an edit button and there's a quick edit. You want to click on edit. So by default, 
WordPress has a template for privacy policy. You can either use the default template or you can use mine. So mine, I think is a little bit more comprehensive than the default template. So if you want to use mine, same thing, link in the description. And I've also highlighted the parts where you need to change to either your email address or your domain name. And make sure you make a copy of this template first, change everything on the template, and then you copy it over to WordPress. So assuming I've changed this to my website and then I've changed my email address, and in case you wanna know how to create a domain email address and manage it for free on Gmail, you can check out the link in the top right of this video or you can check out the link in the description. So let's move forward, assuming I've edited everything here, I'll just Control A and Control C to copy everything. Let's head over back to WordPress. We'll do the same thing, Control A and Control V to paste everything. And as you can see, it's all here. So what you need to take note is there is this cookie policy link which, which you have to replace because right now it's pointing to a dummy page. So you want to point it to the cookie policy you have created. And that's why I've mentioned you need to take note of the link when you have created the cookie policy just now. So right now, let's open a new tab for your WordPress dashboard. And over here, you see this view. You can either right click and copy the link or you can just click on view and copy this link here and head back over here, edit, click on edit and then you paste the cookie policy link here and you hit submit and we're done. So there are two links that you have to change. One is here and the other one is all the way to the bottom over here, edit and place it here. And we're basically done. Remove this and let's publish this. So now I'm gonna show you how you can create an about me page like this, where there is a timeline like this. You can include a video. You can put in testimonials like this, put in your credentials, and then a button. And all this without using a landing page creator plugin. But you need two things. One is the Generate Press Premium, and the other is a plugin called Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg. So all these plugins here are the plugins that I recommend you using to have the best functionality and speed. And I've talked about this on another video. You can check out the link on the top. All links in the description is basically part three of this video series. So now let's get to it. So now what we'll do is on the right, you will see the completed page where we'll reference it to. And on the left, I will show you all the changes I've made to eventually create a page like this. But what we are not focusing on on this video is how to create the logo as well as the menus. What we are focusing on are whatever that goes on after that, which are here. We will not be talking about the footer as well. So let's get to it. So the first thing you need to do is to scroll over to pages, add new. And then we want to add a title, which is about. And let me walk you through the layout here. On the right, you see the panel here. Whenever you select something, it will be under a block where you can adjust all the stuff here. And if you wanna adjust stuff like the link, the featured image, page attributes, anything that relates to the page itself, not the elements, not the block itself, it will be edited on the document here. So just to show you how it looks like now, I will just click on preview and you'll see that now it looks like this. What we wanna do now is that we want to stretch this part over here. We don't want this side widget. So how we're gonna do that is we, we want to look over on the right. We wanna search for this layout. So under the sidebar layout, we want to have it no sidebars. And then as you save draft and you refresh this, you can see that the sidebar is gone the site widget is gone. So now I want to remove this about because over here, if you have a title, you can't adjust the alignments. So as you can see here, there are no adjustments that I can make on the title. So I want to click on this eye over here. If you roll, scroll over here, there's an eye here. Just click on disable content title. So what you want to do next is to click here, write about 
to Jack Chow just like this. So as you click on the text, you can see a bar like this. What you want to do is to click on this, change block type or style, and then select heading. And over here, if you want to change the alignment to center, you can change it to text center. And then as you save draft and you refresh, you see that about Jack Chow is here. So now we won't worry so much about the font style and the size of it. Let me put everything in place and then we will adjust the style of it. Okay, so let's head back over to WordPress. We'll copy this sentence. Over here, we'll just paste it. Align center. Okay, and then let's scroll down. Over here, you see that there's an image on the right and the text is on the left. So what we're gonna do is to head back over to our WordPress and hit, hit enter. And as you can see over here, there's a plus. What you wanna select is browse all, and then you will see media and text over here. Click on that, and then you see on the left is media, but if you wanna change the media to the right, all you need to do is to click this, and then you upload the image. And then let me copy and paste over the text. So if you want to adjust the size of this image, you can just roll over. You'll see that there is a line coming out. You can just adjust the alignment of it. And there you have it. And then next we have this header here. Let's copy this, paste it here. And then over here, you want to change this to heading, align center. And let's copy this as well. Paste it over. This should be align center, this as well. And then let's copy this over here. This is a header, but this header is a little uh, smaller. We we'll choose this as a H3. As you can see over here, the, this is H2 and this is H3. So what we're gonna do is change this to H3, which is a smaller size for heading. And then we're gonna align this to center. And then let's copy this as well place it here and then we have a list as you can see over here so we'll click here and then click on this plus add block and browse all you'll see that list over here click on that and then we want to copy this paste it here hit enter we have a new list here so we need to copy this and paste it back space or uh, enter sorry and copy this as well Paste it here, and we're basically done with the list. Copy the rest of it here, paste it here. I won't bore you with all this, you already know how to do it, so I'll just fast forward this part. Okay, now we are gonna do something like this. This is the timeline that you have for your About Me page. Okay, so what you need to do is go over here, hit space, and then there's a plus here, browse all. Now this is the part where you need the plugin called the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. And as you can see at the bottom, we can find all these add-on blocks. You can see this content timeline. Click on this. I need to expand it out so you can see the difference. So to edit this, you need to head over to the top right. You can see this settings over here. You need to click this settings and all this will appear in case this disappeared just like what happened. So as you click on this element here, this block here, you can see this block is automatically selected. And if you want to edit this, it's basically all the stuff over here. You see currently there are five items here. If you want to increase the amount of items, you can just increase the amount here. As you can see, there are seven items here, but now I just want to show you three items. So it's easier for us to move forward. Otherwise you'll take a lot of time. So if you want to change the date, you can't just change the date here. You have to change it over here, date settings. So you can change the format. And if you want to change this date to, for example, um, for my case is February 4, 2014. So it's February 4, 2014. And then if you want to change the headings here, you can change it here. Started my online business. Okay, if you don't want anything here, you can just remove it. Or if you want to add something, it's really up to you. For the second content timeline, we have May 14, 2014. So date settings number two, May 14, 2014. And as you can see, this is changed. And then let me copy this, thought of quitting. And then the description. And finally, the third one, we have May 20th, 2014. 
as you can see it's changed here okay and we are done so let's save draft and let's preview it so as you can see we have a bare skeleton over here and we have the timeline over here let's continue with the rest copy this paste it here and just in case you want to take a look at this page the link is here is jackchow.com slash about and now we'll place a video here let me copy this link and then what we're gonna do is hit enter and then plus browse all and you will see YouTube here click on YouTube place the video link here and bid it and you'll see the video here and that's how you embed any videos on YouTube on a WordPress page and then next you I want to copy this paste it here now if you see here there are three dots over here this is basically a separator so hit enter you got a plus here and let's search for separator over here you can see this separator so under this separator right um, if you click on the settings here you see the sidebar is gone the bar where you can edit stuff is gone so what you need to do is just to click on this settings and it will reappear here so if you want to edit this right you can either have it on white line or you can have it dots so for my case this is the dot that we are using and then you can change the color of this to whatever color you want so for my case it's orange and we're basically done with the separator and then let's continue with the rest we have this header here centralize it and then some further text here and now we have the testimonial so this is also a blog in the add-ons so if you scroll down all the way you can see testimonial here click on that and you'll see it here and to edit this part you can do the same click on settings okay you can edit uh, you can put some image around here so select image okay i'll place it here okay so you see over here this image is right here so if you want to change the text you can just change it here and rex is from taiwan copy the text here but basically if you have testimonials you will just want to include it here if not it's not necessary to have testimonial function here best is not to use a testimonial that is not genuine so the thing is you can either have this portion uh this section with two columns okay as you can see there if you want to have more testimonials here you can add more columns and then you can increase the number of testimonials here so that uh there will be a lot of uh, testimonials for you to for people to scroll through so it's really up to you how you want to do this but for this case i have put only one column and three testimonials just to show you an example but you can play around with this and you can even change the color of this dots over here you can change the testimonial color the text of it to different colors over here you can see and the name color you can change it as well and the company color which is over here you can see and then the dots and arrow you can change this depending on whatever fits your personal brand okay so i'll leave it as it is and let's continue so over here these are my credentials so if you want to put this heading over here centralize it and it's the same thing over here it's a media and text just like what we did over here okay so i will not bore you with the details all you need to do is upload the image and upload the text here and it place a link and i'll show you how to place a link later on okay so i will just um, add this media and text just imagine that there is no link here so let me just adjust this size here first okay the same thing if you want to adjust the size of this select just normal and then if you want to adjust the size it's really up to you how big you want it uh, for my case my attacks are usually 20 so it's easy to read on both desktop and on mobile so if you want to place a link all you need to do is to highlight the text that you want to place a link on and just click on this link and you paste the link you want to direct people to if you don't have this turned on whenever somebody clicks on this and you hit submit 
and you can see there is a link created here so whenever someone clicks on this link it will bring them to the page that this link is directed to so normally what i will do is i will select this open a new tab because okay let me just show you what will exactly happen okay if i don't turn this on if i don't have the new tab turned on if I click on this, it will redirect me to the page over here. It will not create a new tab. And this is not what we want. We want people to stay on our page as long as possible. So that's why you need to have this turn on, save draft, refresh this. And if somebody clicks on this, they will create a new tab here. Okay, so this is how it works. So I won't do the rest. And let me show you this button, but let me just so now over here, to create this button like this, as you hover, you can see that there are changes in the button itself. So what we need to do is to click on this plus at block, okay, browse all. You need to scroll down all the way to the add-ons and you search for marketing button. Okay, by default, it will look like this is very ugly. So if you want to edit this, click on the settings okay the icon i don't want the icon there so i will just hit this close button so it will be gone and then for the content because right now it is very small let me just save draft and let me show you how it looks like now okay it looks like this this is not ideal so what we want to do is to change this to h3 so it will look a little bit bigger okay for the typography i will not change anything right now i will change this to start free course and i don't want any description okay so now i want to change the i want to change the color of the content okay so if you hit over here there are a few things that you can change here you can change the content you can change the background the border Okay, so now I want to change the content first. So if I hover over to the button, you can see that the text changes color to white. And if I hover out of it, it will become black color. So this is what we want to change it to. So under content, so all these are the things that you can change. So for normal, we want it black color. Okay, but if you hover over, you want to change it to white color and there is no icon or description so we can leave this blank so what will happen now is if i roll over you see the text changes to white color so this is basically what we want to change for content and then let's change the background okay the padding is basically padding means white spaces between the border of the button and the text okay so we want it to have a lot of headings on the side and on the top so this is what we are going to do here if you're going to change the padding to for example you can see there's a lot of space between the border and the text so this is too much we'll reduce it to 20 or 22 20 i think this is fine and on the side we want to change it to maybe 40 okay so you can see this is uh this is looking a little nicer and then now we want to change the button background okay for the background if it's normal we want to make it white color okay and if you hover over we want to change it to um, orange so if you can see here if i scroll over it will change color to orange and then for the border i want to have the border width to be three because as you can see the border is actually very thin so i want to change this to three so it will look thicker and then the radius is basically if you add this radius here you can see that it's turning into over but for me i like it to be rectangle so i will just leave it blank and the border color i want it to be orange so i'll click orange here and then if i hover over it will still be orange so that's basically it if i save draft refresh this you can see the changes here so that's basically the skeleton of how you're gonna create an about me page now we're gonna focus on designing the about me page to look like this so now let's check it out over here you want to head over to the top bar over here as you can see click on customize and it will lead you to a page like this let's go to layout the container so this is the setting i'm using okay i have 1000 for a container width and the separating space i have 50 so that there there are more white space and then the content padding i will have 50 as well okay and then let's go back hit on header 
My current setting for the header padding is 30. Let's go back here. Let's go back again. So the important thing is we want to have this background white color instead of having this gray spacing here. So we want to go to colors and then under body, we want to select this background color and change it to white. So as you can see, it blends with the content. Okay, so we want to publish this first so that the changes will be set. Now let's change the font. Let's go back here. Let's change the typography under the body. The font that I'm using is Poppins. Okay, this is the font that I'm using. Okay, and the font size, I have it on default is 20. The line height, I put it as two so that there will be a lot more spacing in between and the margin as well, I put it as two. So as you can see, it's much easier to read if everything is spaced out. Okay, let's go back. Now what we want to change here is the headings, okay? Because over here, you can see this is the heading, this is the heading, but it's not like what I have over here. So over here on under headings, we want to change the font size of H1 to 50. So let me scroll up so you can see the differences. So the font size over here, I want to change it to 50. Oh, I'm sorry. This should be H1, but I made a mistake. This is currently H2, but I should change this to H1 later on. So basically what we have over here for H1, I want to make it 50. And then H2, I want to make it 40. So as you can see, once I change this, to 40, the size of this changes this as well. And I want to bold this. So what I'll do is just to select bold. So you can see all the H2 will be bold. So now let's go to H3. There's only one H3 here, which is over here. And we want to change this to 30. And we want to bold this as well. Okay, as you can see over here, it's similar. And that's basically it. Let's publish this. And let's preview this again. So now, as you can see, this regarding this header, this logo and the menu over here is basically looking quite decent, I would say. Now, if you don't know what to write for your About Me page, then I recommend that you check out the video right here or you can check out the link in the description. I've shared a formula for you to write your About Me page and I hope it helps. Anyway, thank you for sticking around and I hope that this video did provide you with what you're looking for. And if you want to get the Generate Press Premium, which is the theme and the plugin that I use to style the About Me page, you can use the link right here. It is my affiliate link if you use it. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. I'll continue to provide you with more helpful videos like this. In fact, in the next video, I'll be showing you how to create a homepage using Generate Press. And the reason I use Generate Press is because I can achieve Google page speed ratings like this. And I don't use any other page builders because it will slow down the website. So if you want to get notified of new videos like this from this channel, then hit the subscribe button and check the bell icon. I wish you all the best. And when the next video is up, I'll post it up on the right. You can also check out other videos from this Start Your Personal Brand website series in the description as well. I look forward to seeing you on the next video coming up on the right.